In a previous video, you guys saw me on a wilderness system that has reverse using a propeller drive. I was able to pull fish out of the trees real nice. This getaway, made by Pelican, is also foot powered, but it has fins and no reverse. But didn't seem to make a difference because I was able to catch fish. Ooh, oh, oh boy, look at that. Boy. A bigger fish, as a matter of fact. And that was without anything added onto this boat at all. This rod holder is aftermarket and screwed right into the rails that were already on the boat. That and the cheap price is a nice feature to make up for no reverse. Anyhow, I decided to take this simple kayak back home and outfit it. I started with the paddle holder, which is meant to mount in one of those rails. I took the factory attachment points off and using these screws, I reattached the paddle holder to the side of the boat. That freed up some space on the rail over there, which is also where the tiller handle mounts, which can be mounted on either side. That's a pretty nice feature. Then I got to work outfitting the rest, first by adding some flush mount rod holders. You can buy these aftermarket really easy. And as far as installations go, it's one of the easiest things you can do to a kayak. I did lots of things to this Pelican getaway, using tools out of the back of my truck, while I was staying over here in this forest. That's what we do here at Sofinger Estates. In all seriousness though, it doesn't really matter where you are, you can outfit a kayak in your living room, in your backyard. In prior videos, I worked on this getaway here at this wonderful workshop. And I added carpet to make it nice and quiet and comfortable. These are nice conveniences, for sure. Like having an area under the seat for a tackle box. Or places out back to mount my cameras. But does all this convenience and flashy nonsense make a difference? I guess the real test is to go out and see if you can catch more fish with all these modifications. Maybe if all those modifications give you confidence, that would be a factor. <laughs> fish! How about that? God, I like this boat. Let's see how she does with no reverse. I've always been a firm believer that the real key is spending time on the water. Like my friend Todd says all the time, if you fish more, you catch more. Mm -hmm. Don't you splash my drink. Don't you do it. I was taking it easy with this fish and trying to play him as long as I could. <laughs> because it's really only fun while your rod is bent. And that's the main reason we come out here. I also didn't want to lose him. And eventually I got my fish grips on him. Isn't that beautiful? And all the time that I was goofing off, I didn't realize I was drifting towards these trees. The wind was blowing in pretty fast, and I had to take a time out and paddle away from the trees so that I could get my nose facing the right way and then pedal away so that I could deal with my fish. I suppose having reverse would have been really handy at this moment, but ultimately I got what I was after, didn't I? I was able to catch myself a fish. I feel I'm thrumming in my fingers, it's making that drumming sound. Come here, you. Oh, off he goes. Well, well, well. That is what it's all about. Nice. With the fish released, I got back up on the booster seat and positioned myself in front of the trees again to see if I could catch another fish. Quickly, I realized this wind was going to be relentless and 
and was going to keep pushing me into the trees, so I decided to try a tactic that I've used once before. The next best thing to having instant reverse. The Pelican high drive fits in forward or backwards. This is working pretty nice. But despite being able to hold myself off of the trees against the wind, there did not seem to be any more redfish around here, or snook, or trout. So I put my rod away and I turned the high drive back around. And then I pedaled myself off to a different spot. One thing the pedals are really good at is trolling. It was easy to have a line out as I went from place to place. It's also nice and quiet, and you don't have paddles dripping all over yourself. In the side rail here, I took my cup holder out, now that I was done with my morning drink. And I put a tall rod holder in here, which was convenient for when I was sitting in the higher position on this seat. I guess modifications are nice to have all these conveniences. But still, my score was only one small redfish. So I pedaled around and I persisted. And I kept myself busy with all these little things, like moving the tiller handle back over to the other side. While trolling, I was able to use the forward-facing rod holder that I had previously added. And it was a really gorgeous spot. But despite all that, still, no fish. Yahoo and the Whirly Bird. This is a nice spot. Gotta wish I had some, some crabs or bait. Being able to stand up gave me the ability to see through the water a little bit better, and there were definitely fish here, but they were lazy and they weren't eating my artificial lures. I started thinking about how I used to fish back when I first started kayaking. Back then I always had live shrimp. And boy, I was wishing I had some of that right about now. After the helicopter left and I put my lure in the trees a couple times, I moved on, decided it was time to fix my lure. These paddle tails work pretty good, but they're, they're so soft they get ruined kind of quickly. One of the things I carry in my tackle is a first aid kit. And in the first aid kit, I have some super glue. You can get like a 10 pack of these at Harbor Freight really cheap. And they're awesome for many things, including fixing your lures. This tip has been brought to you by Marty Stick Finger. Sticky Finger. <laughs> Well, I put my first aid kit back in the exo crate in the back. I gotta say, it really does good to my OCD to have a place to put everything. So that modification is nice. And then I got back to trolling, and that didn't really seem to be doing the trick. Getting a bite today was really difficult. So I went back to skipping the lure under the trees every opportunity I got. And finally it paid off. Skip the lure in that hole right there. And there was a snook weight. Although snook don't have teeth, I paid the price for a lip in this guy. Alright, you little spunky guy. Ooh. Snook thumb. When they're young, they, uh, the sandpaper hasn't been worn down yet on their lips. <laughs> Boy, he was spunky. Hiding right in there. Now if I could get a trout, I'd be
be in slam town. Let's see if there's anybody else hiding under the trees. <laughs> Not gonna catch them like that, Mark. Hey, have a ride. Well, you can see why every once in a while I have to fix my lures with super glue. But it turns out that there's other reasons why you should have super glue with you. An injury on the tip of your thumb when your hands are wet makes it very difficult to apply a bandage and have it stay. So a little drop of super glue can sometimes be exactly what the uh, doctor ordered. I'm curious to know what your opinion is about crazy glue. Have you ever used it on a cut? Do you even keep a first aid kit on your kayak? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. Ooh. It might sting a little bit, but I've actually mm -hmm. had doctors tell me that this is a very good way to treat wounds. Well, despite all the modifications I had made to this kayak, and all the effort I put into work in the mangroves, catching a fish didn't seem to be happening. Not often, at any rate. So I went back to the lazy way, and restarted trolling. Hmm. Ooh, dear. I was trolling back. Something decided to come up and eat my lure. Can you imagine the nerve? Oh, tell me. It's a redfish. How lovely. I was thinking to myself how awesome this place would be if you were using live shrimp. But it's pretty awesome even when you're using artificials. <laughs> Go on, tire yourself out, guy. Who needs a motor? <laughs> Come here, Rudolph. What a beaut. As you can tell, it doesn't take a lot of fish, or even big fish, for me to enjoy myself Golly. when I'm out kayak fishing. I've got my friend Steve to thank for teaching me the uh, importance of trolling instead of just going back. I had a lure out behind me and uh, more and more lately I've been catching fish like that. Trolling works pretty good I think. I'll be doing a lot more of that in the future. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that right now. There we go. This kayak certainly makes it easy. Well, I postponed going back just yet after catching that fish, thinking it might be able to catch another. So I trolled back and forth, back and forth. And while I was trolling, I saw a couple sharks. Any chance of catching them without live bait is pretty much out of the question. There. At one point, I got a sneaking suspicion that one was following me. Maybe it's me. I kept seeing wakes behind the kayak. Jesus, it's right here. <laughs> he is following me. Hi, Bubba. <laughs> Thought it was a shark for a second. He thinks I'm his mother. You know, I'm just kind of cruising along. And this guy wants to be right behind me. I've seen this before. Pulling in right behind me. Look dude, don't don't knock me in the water, okay? 
Maybe if I sit still, he'll go away. <laughs> now, if you're out here at night and a manatee does that to you, <laughs> oh my god. I was out with my friend Jesse once at night, and I think one came up and it was like following him and touching his kayak, and he was freaking out. Freaking out. I gotta talk him off a ledge, man. He was. <laughs> He was not happy. <laughs> Back to trolling. Well, the fishing continued to be really poor, so my friends and I decided it was time to call it a day. They had had a harder day than I did, so I saw a perfect opportunity to rub it in. <laughs> After all, it wasn't often that I caught more fish than my friend Steve did. I'll, I'll try not to rub it in. Just remember, retribution, pay back, pay. Uh-huh. I just came out to keep the company today. I want to see this video happen. <laughs> Beautiful. A little, I mean, I don't know. They, one of them might have been in the slot, but I, I didn't care. I let them both go. And then you lost. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I, I might have. It might have been a mullet that swam through my line, and it took him a couple seconds to uh, untangle himself. Well, nice day to come out and, catch, huh? and fish and catch for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's starting already. Next time we come out before you leave, I want to take a ride on my bus to see what the difference is between that and that. I got two of them. This weekend. This one is freaking phenomenal with a forward facing rod holder. Um, That's not your original one. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. And it's got the uh, carpet on it. And it's, I know, for your feet. But it's quiet. For your, for your little fluffy bunny slip. Yes, yes, yes. Talk all you like. You will love it. <laughs> well, I guess one advantage to a nicely outfitted kayak is the bragging rights. Lots of people want to try your kayak when it's real neat looking. Whether it has foot drive or reverse or forward or carpet on it. And it definitely helps with a person's confidence, if not with actually catching fish. In the next video, perhaps I'll try live bait and we'll see if that makes a difference. Meantime, I appreciate you guys coming along on another journey of mine. Stay tuned, this won't be the last one.